Hello. The programme you're about to see is intended to help patients who've recently been diagnosed as having cancer. But there's also information for patients and their relatives and friends about the two most common forms of treatment apart from surgery. That's to say chemotherapy and radiotherapy. The programme has been written not only by doctors and nurses who are experienced in the management of patients with cancer, but by patients themselves who've actually undergone a course of treatment. We've tried to cover as much ground as possible and you'll probably find the information quite concentrated so you might need to watch the programme more than once. The hope is that it will help you and your family with some of the decisions which often have to be made at this time and perhaps it will also help you cope with some of the ups and downs of the treatment that lies ahead of you. As hospital departments are run in different ways and treatment policies vary from one region to another, this programme aims to provide a general overview rather than dwelling on specific factors, which may vary from one patient to another, even with the same tumour type. Your specialist doctor or oncologist will consider many factors in great detail in order to tailor make treatment for each patient. Before you start, the treatment will be discussed with you. If you accept this course, you will be asked to sign a consent form. The main object of this form is to clarify that you fully understand the treatment and are aware of any potential side effects. Radiotherapy is the use of x-rays to treat patients with malignant disease. Radiotherapy can be given alone or in a combination with surgery or chemotherapy. Radiotherapy is broadly divided into two main categories, i.e. palliative or curative. It should have been explained which category applies to you. Palliative means that radiotherapy is given to relieve local symptoms from a tumour. For example, to lessen pain or stop bleeding, or to prevent damage to neighbouring structures such as nerves. It is usually given over a short period of time, either on one day or one or two weeks. In curative, a higher dose of radiotherapy is given, aiming to completely eradicate the tumour. This has to be spread over a longer period, often four to six weeks, to allow your normal cells to repair. When I first had my treatment, for the first few stages of it, the lump actually grew, because I suppose it was aggravated. And then after about a week or so, um, the lump got smaller and smaller and smaller, until now, and it's not there. <laughs> It's gone. <laughs> because the equipment necessary to administer radiotherapy is expensive and requires a lot of space and specially trained staff, radiotherapy departments tend to be found in the larger regional hospitals or cancer centres. Therefore, most patients often have to do a lot of travelling each day. Your first appointment at the radiotherapy centre will be a planning session. This will either be in the simulator, the CT scanner, or in the mould room. You should have been given this information in advance, but in any case, on arrival in the department, you will report to the reception desk, show them your appointment card, and they will direct you to the appropriate place. For some patients, having treatment in the head and neck area, a shell or mould is usually made. This involves a trip to the mould room. In the mould room, a plaster cast impression is made of your face and neck. From this cast, a perspex mould is made, which fits snugly onto your head with holes cut out for your eyes, nose and mouth. This keeps your head completely still, so you don't have to worry about moving during treatment. It also allows marks to be drawn on the mask and not on your skin. This mould may feel a little strange at first, but you will usually only have it on for a few minutes at a time, and you'd soon get used to it. During your planning stage, you will also be asked to visit the simulator room, which is a direct mock-up of an actual therapy machine. But the x-rays produced are only for pictures. This helps the radiographers and oncologists to decide the exact area within your body which needs treatment. Radiographers are people who operate the machines to plan and give you your treatment. They work closely with the oncologist and other people within the department. They can give you help and advice about any aspect of your treatment, 
and you shouldn't be embarrassed to ask them anything you are concerned or anxious about. During this planning stage, very accurate measurements will be taken of your body, and it does require you to be lying on a fairly hard couch, which may be slightly uncomfortable. In some cases, a small tattoo about the size of a pinhead is made on your body, giving a permanent record of the measurements. You may also have to attend the simulator on more than one occasion. This is probably the longest time you'll have to lie on a couch. Once all the measurements are taken, the rest of your treatment planning will be behind the scenes with the aid of a physicist who is a highly trained specialist in the subject of radiation. He or she assists the oncologist in deciding the best way of delivering the amount of radiotherapy needed. Only when the radiographers, physicists and doctors are 100% confident with your planned treatment will you proceed. The treatment machine looks like the simulator, but is a lot bigger. You'll not be required to do anything that you've not already done in the simulator. You'll be seen by the oncologist during your radiotherapy at regular intervals, and if there are any problems outside the clinic times, the radiographers can always contact your doctor. If you feel any distress during treatment, the machine can be turned off, and the radiographers will be at your side within seconds. Treatment usually lasts one or two minutes, and while the machine is on, you usually don't have any sensation, unless the nose is being treated, when you might notice a faint smell of ozone. Even though the radiographers are not in the room while you're being treated, you are being watched at all times on a video camera. There's also an intercom which is left on so that they can hear as well as see you constantly. The side effects of radiotherapy can be broadly split into two categories. Firstly, the early or acute side effects. These come on during or shortly after treatment and depend on the size and area of the body being treated. Your abdomen, for example, is very sensitive to radiotherapy and it is common to suffer from nausea in this situation. This nausea can come on one or two hours after treatment. If a large area of your abdomen is being treated, then anti-sickness tablets are best prescribed before your treatment. During radiotherapy, your skin may get red and itchy, similar to sunburn. Your radiographers will be looking for these reactions but you should let them know as soon as you feel soreness. Don't apply creams or dressings unless recommended by your radiographer or oncologist. Avoid sun, excessive washing and rubbing on these areas. Each department will have its own skin care policy which will be available to you. I didn't actually have too many of the side effects that the doctor told me about. Um, I, had, I was lethargic quite a bit and I had a slightly sore throat towards the end of the treatment. But apart from that, I didn't really have anything too sinister. If the ovaries in women or the testes in men are being irradiated, there will be a risk of infertility and reduced hormone output, which should have been discussed with you in advance. On no account must a female patient be pregnant, but there's no risk of harming any babies or pregnant women if you meet them during your radiotherapy course or afterwards. Radiotherapy to your mouth and throat will cause some soreness, otherwise called mucositis. This usually starts halfway through your treatment and is at its worst toward the end of your treatment, but can persist for some time afterwards. It's important to keep your mouth clean with regular soft toothbrushing, dental floss and mouthwashes. Once mucositis has started, treatment to prevent secondary thrush infection is often given. It's also important to maintain a good nutrition and avoid smoking and alcohol. With radiotherapy, you will lose hair within the treatment area. It usually begins to fall out after two or three weeks. Most hair loss is temporary, but can be permanent in some cases. There are many other acute side effects, which have not been mentioned here, but these should have been explained to you before the start of treatment. Late side effects are those which can develop months or even years after the end of radiotherapy. These are the ones your oncologist worries about most. The type of side effect will obviously depend upon which area you're having irradiated. For example, if your salivary glands are irradiated, you'll get dryness of the mouth, which can last several months after treatment and may be permanent. This side effect in particular should have been discussed with you before starting treatment. Other late side effects are rare, but can cause considerable distress. These include 
thickening of the skin and underlying structures, damage to nerves, damage to the bowel or waterworks, damage to the heart and lungs. Even rarer, a secondary malignancy may be induced. Your oncologist would have taken the risks of these late side effects into account when deciding on your treatment strategy. In any case, the risk is usually no more than 1 to 5 percent. These risks should have been discussed with you during your consent consultation. The hospital staff were absolutely wonderful. Um, no complaints at all. They, they really were. They, you'd go in sort of feeling quite glum and by the time you were leaving, you know, sort of they definitely buoyed your spirits up. If you have any questions or difficulties with anything at all that you've just seen, do get in touch with your specialist nurse or with your oncologist. I very much hope that you found the programme helpful and my best wishes to you all.